Uh, okay, now we'll get going. Okay, uh, Azure Sentinel, how to deploy a SOC service in seconds. A little bit uh, alluding to something there, you know, a SOC service is not necessarily something you can deploy in seconds, but a SOC, Security Operations Center capability, is something you can deploy in seconds. Um, so I'll see you guys later if uh, you came just for that. But no. uh, so, uh, Daily, introduce yourself. I'm Daily. Carl Wrangler. Yep. So I specialise in Blue Team Security, from anything from Azure Security to Microsoft Visual Cloud Security, but it's the security in the Azure as an ecosystem, chances are I probably know. Yep, and I'm uh, Drew Perry. Uh, I uh, come from a technical hands on hacking red team kind of background. So, blue team, red team works well, a nice combo to work together to build. Uh, Daily and I have built a security operations center service over the past sort of 24 months to 12 months uh, based on Sentinel, Defender, and the Microsoft security stack. So, we've learned a lot about the automation capabilities, the good, the bad, uh, and uh, that side of things. So, that's what we'll be touching on today. Uh, thank you to the sponsors of this event, because obviously if we... <laughs> thank you, thank you to the, these lovely companies, uh, and more importantly, these ones with smaller logos, these are the ones who are even more important, I feel. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so as I said, what are we here to talk about? Security operations, but what is that? You know, that can mean a lot of different things. As I said, before, um, you know, a security, uh, a SOC service could be something that's delivered uh, very, very quickly, either from a customer perspective to uh, working with a managed service provider, or potentially for a large corporation where your customer is your different geographically spaced business units. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve there. Uh, but yeah, deploying this capability is very, very possible within 60 seconds. If you build out your ARM templates, you've got your DevOps pipelines, you've done all that pre rec work, you can push out capability very quickly. So what we're going to do today is touch on uh, the good and the bad. So basically what I would call the legacy world and the world we live in now. Uh, leveraging uh, the Microsoft security stack, Sentinel, Defender, all the bits we'll touch on uh, that makes the art of the possible. Uh, but yeah, it's not just a technical thing. We can't forget about the humans, the people, the process uh, in uh, doing something like that. So, daily, when you think of the Security Operations Center, does that come to mind? Basically, yeah. exactly. This is the world we all are theoretically working. Uh, so who here, what have we got here? Is it, do we have any analysts in the room? Security analysts? SOC analysts? No? Do we have any? <laughs> do, does anyone here work in a security operations centre? Oh, we could just say whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is exactly what we do, Dave. So this is this is what we this is this is this is our world. A apparently, according to Google, uh, when you type in security operation, this is the type of image that comes to mind. This is what comes up. This is silly. You know, we, we don't need huge dashboards. We don't need huge screens, heads up displays. I mean, where what what screens do you look at? Mostly? I have a one screen. And um, sometimes on my second screen while walking. So. And what's on that screen? More my sensible instances. Teams, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, so if it's in teams, it's teams, every analyst, every engineer, every consultant has their little screen in front of them. This stuff's for show. You know, you're getting customers coming in. You want to show off capabilities with your fancy dashboards. But in reality, it doesn't lead to improved uh, detection response. Uh, and and uh, those types of capabilities that matter when you have a cyber security incident. A big dashboard that shiny is not going to help you through it. Okay, so uh, do we have anyone in the room who uses or are familiar with any of these vendors or technologies? You guys don't count. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. So I wanted to, I wanted to raise um, what uh, uh, happens in a legacy world within a security operations center 
and what happens in a modern security operations center. And we're going to play a game where I'm going to tell you a story and how things were painful and it used to happen, and then Daly's going to step in and say, uh, the pain-free world we live in now uh, through the out of the possible with the technologies uh, at our disposal. Um, I have worked with uh, ArcSight in particular for uh, since 2004. Um, ArcSight is a SIEM platform. All of these are SIEM uh, products or platforms. Um, so you know the heart of a security operations center. We are sending logs. We are sending events. We are doing that correlation. Um, it's that one incident view to uh, hopefully detect badness within an environment. But there are inherent problems with this legacy technology, uh, mostly to do with onboarding and the speed of getting up and running, or the, the overheads of um, uh, technical capability and for the complexity of the technology to even get it deployed. Uh, some of it's not easy. You have to pay expensive day rate consultants just to get a connector server up and running, just to configure the logs correctly, just to give you some form of use case to detect multiple brute forces against your VPN uh, legacy. But you know, you'd spend a lot of money and time trying to build up this capability to give you um, detection response uh, in your SOC. So yeah, this is the world Daly and I live in. Uh, the world of Azure Sentinel. Um, yeah, so who, 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 if I ask the question, who uses Azure Sentinel here? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so we've got no arcs like users, no split users, no stock people, no analyst people. That's great. As I say, um, yeah, we, we can go into that. So Sentinel is a cloud native scene platform, uh, lives over top of uh, log analytics. Uh, it is uh, heavily int uh, integrated from a, uh, well, you can easily integrate it with all your other tools and technologies, either to get logs into the, uh, into the uh, workspace via connectors, uh, you can also bring in all your on-prem logs, you know, traditional syslog, as long as you can get it into common event format, or CEPH, which is a standard that was developed by ArcSight many, many years ago. Uh, you can very quickly do things with that logging information. Uh, by things, I mean applying what is now called security analytics. Uh, what used to be called uh, use cases, alerts, and we'll touch on this later, alarms. Ugh, I just think that term is gross. It makes us feel like yeah. night watchmen, like just security guards with a flashlight, and it's nah, not good. Um, so yeah, Sentinel. The other power of, of Sentinel is um, uh, leveraging the Microsoft Security Graph and all the API integration. There's, there's a hugely rich ecosystem of integration capabilities and also backed up by some pretty cool threat intelligence stuff on the Microsoft side or your own third party ways of getting intelligence into the platform to provide context. So you know, what are the threat actors up to? What are the ISCs, the tactics, techniques, procedures, all of that fun stuff? So let's start jumping into uh, six steps to deploy a SOC service in seconds. So the first step is access. So in the traditional world, this could be access to a customer's environment. This could be access to the log sources that generate firewall events, uh, IPS events, uh, your uh, Linux servers, your Windows servers, and that was painful and slow. You had to get a VPN connection into that environment. You had to go through change control to get firewall rules opened up. You'd have to then submit another firewall change request when someone opened TCP port 514, but actually some legacy technology was sending it on UDP 514. So you've got to go through that whole cycle again. Very painful. Um, you know, you were exposing uh, and, and increasing your attack surface because of service accounts where passwords would expire every maybe 90 days and then that log source would go quiet and you maybe couldn't detect that. So very slow, very painful, uh, having to work with different IT teams to uh, get that access. 
And in the modern world, obviously, Frankie can actually just listen to that sort of stuff you have to do. But in the modern world, if you're a single tenant, you just need to set up an ARM template. So you can go to GitHub, or you can just go to Sentinel yourself, install on top of Log Analytics, a couple of clicks, you're happy. Or if you're a multi tenant or multi customer, multi geographical, use Azure Lighthouse. Azure Lighthouse is another Microsoft service which gives you a single plane to look at multiple tenants. Um, if you want to start deploying, you can use your service principles, which we also use in our DevOps CI CD pipeline. All this can be done in a matter of seconds, moments. As long as you've got the right permissions, you've got a global admin, own a subscription, you've got a subscription, relatively speaking, pretty quickly. And one important thing which I quite like is something as simple as people leaving, people joining, rather than have to go in, set up access to every one of those people, you can set up an access review using Azure, add a user, sign up, sign back in, and put all the permissions in. Relatively simple compared to the first step. Absolutely. So, step two. Uh, Okay, so you've got the access. Now we actually get, want to get some events into your same platform. You want to get events that are going to feed your security operations center to give your analysts something to respond to, something to investigate, maybe do some threat hunting uh, to try and detect compromise uh, and badness, as I keep alluding to. Uh, and the old way of doing this, you know, you might have to have connector servers spread around geographically. Um, maybe they were physical, maybe they were VMs if you were lucky. Uh, you would have to put agents everywhere, uh, different types of agents to get different types of logs for either user behavior analytics or uh, endpoint uh, security event or application logs from event viewer. Too many agents, different ways, different technologies, it gets quite confusing. Um, you might have had to have developed parsers. And I was hoping maybe someone here might be, come from the ArcSight world and understand the pain of writing what's called a flex connector. With all the regular expressions and all the craziness that comes with it, um, where a consultancy company would charge you 15 grand just for one parser. And then guess what happens? It changes uh, in the next version. And you've got to pay that consultancy again to redevelop a new parser. It's inefficient and slow. Um, yeah, in incredibly slow. Uh, but in the modern world, to get logs into your platform... Click, click, click. Pretty much. Once you've got your sensor instance up, go into the data connectors, pick which one connector you want. As long as you've got the correct license, you click, you connect. The most important thing with connectors is just making sure um, you're aware of the charges, ingest charges, but fundamentally, click, click. Well, if you're doing a single tenant, you could just go through it yourself, or you can find a managed tenant to go in and do it for you, and that's why we put using um, Azure DevOps. Yeah, and the other thing, if uh, you are deploying Azure Sentinel over top of Log Analytics, uh, you, there's no charge associated with any of your uh, Azure Activity events, uh, your Office 365 events, your Defender Alerts, uh, SharePoint Teams, uh, there's no cost to ingest or store those, and you can then apply analytics over top of that, and you've got a SOC service in its most fundamental basic form to get that visibility, leveraging you know your existing licenses and no further uh, Sentinel uh, uh, Azure spend. Um, wow, so that, that's hidden, isn't it? Because it's not that easy. I mean, when we initially tried to do that. Mm -hmm. A screen comes up saying you need to connect it to the pen, and then actually there's a button at the bottom somewhere which says you can skip, and, and then you get access to it. Have you experienced that? Oh, I haven't experienced that. So we wanted to try Sentinel start this off with no, no extra cost. Yeah. And then the first thing Sentinel tells you is there's no information there, we can't get anything, we can't get any information because there's a screen saying you need to connect it to the pen, then obviously the defender ATP or whatever. Yes, so there's two bits to that. There's Defender Alerts, which you can easily tick a box to say it'll generate an incident and pass through from Defender for Endpoint or other Defender um, bits. Yeah. But then there's the, the Defender Logs, the Device Events Table, yeah. which is the same within the Advanced Hunting Portal within the Defender Portal. Yeah. That one has cost associated with it, and that one actually has significant value in it from an analyst or threat hunter perspective. But yeah, that one for onboarding requires a bit more. That's not just a click, is it? It's a couple. Okay, maybe three clicks. It's probably an extra click, so maybe three, three, three. Yeah. Yeah. 
but yeah, there is a difference between the alerts that you get uh, from Defender and the events you get from the endpoint in the device events table. Um, yes, but I agree it's not overly clear on the Sentinel side which log sources are free and which ones are going to be charged for. Um, there is a workbook for that though. There is yes. a workbook that will tell you, I think it's the health workbook, isn't it? Yes. If you download that from the GitHub, it should be on the main part of it. Um, but you can download that and that will give you a, a nice table telling you which tables are costing you how much money. Also, you can do a prediction of costs as well. There's also your Sentinel costs and how to put that in there. It's actually in the portal. It's in the portal in the Sentinel. You can use each one and there's your Sentinel costs which tells you which you can get filled. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so once you've got access, you've got some logs, you've got some connectors turned on, uh, you might want to actually do something with those. Uh, in the old world, uh, as I said before, uh, turning on alerts, alarms, use cases, developing content. So detection rules, dashboards, reports, all that stuff. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, and I've personally been um, uh, guilty of this because I used to be a consultant in this space so I'd go to different customer environments and I'd always ask you to develop the same thing. You're reinventing the wheel for not necessarily uh, valuable security outcomes. You know, you're detecting boring stuff like I said before, a brute force attack against a perimeter firewall or something. Who cares about that? It's not really valuable. You know, that's reconnaissance stage. If they, you know, if they get in after that, Defender will pick it up. But anyway, um, it, it was very compliance driven, seeing platforms were like a tick box. Yes, we're centralizing logs, and you're paying all that money to deploy all that, and not getting actual detection response and uh, valuable security outcomes from it. Uh, it was all very custom. Uh, but yeah, these days, uh, Daily does it slightly different. I had a few more clicks. <laughs> but nonetheless, you can actually look into the analytical rules already within Sentinel. If you actually choose those, you can go through GitHub, which is the community, and looking at any other rules that maybe customers created. So, a few more clicks. Um, you can align these um, Sentinel analytical rules to master tactics, so you know, initial actors or comments and those types of things. And if you are uh, a single tenant, you can do it yourselves, or you can outsource that to a multi tenant, which can deploy these rules for you uh, very fast you can get So, an example could be it has to be in this and Microsoft released those um, analytic rules pretty fast, but we, you know, in our case, we let our customers and deploy that for a CI, CD pipeline and that will admit. Yeah, the other extra bonus piece of this is uh, the log sources and connectors are aligned to, there's a tab that has next steps, and that's where it has which relevant security analytics rules you can turn on that are, that are relevant for those logs. Uh, because most people will go through uh, looking at the events first and then come up with the scenarios for detection. But this kind of ties it together nicely because it's all right there. You go, okay, we've now got this connector. Here's the actual security value and outcome from having that turned on. So then you can actually justify the cost of it to say, we need to pay this a little bit more on Azure consumption for this log source because this is the outcome we're going to get from it. We're going to be able to detect this or stop that, or if this happens, we will know about it, which is uh, very, very powerful. But define, how, how would you define the parameters? If you were trying to get to MVP, not for a software, we would say, what would the parameters that you feel for your experience be most valuable? It depends on the business, it depends on, um, depends on the business, but usually it's uh, at least getting that centralized view for the defender alerts and a central queue to get your endpoint detection under control. Um, maybe some use cases around identity. Uh, maybe making sure that uh, if there's any uh, accounts have been compromised, you can see that quickly. But yeah, it really depends on um, your industry and your vertical and what real threats you are facing uh, um, that are likely, or threat actors that are likely to target you. 
So there's a little bit of a workshop maybe you should go through with, um, you know, with a CISO, with an analyst, with an IT team, bring everyone together to workshop that, discuss it, and go, okay, what, what's the likely scenarios that are going to take us down as a business? And then align that back to the simple connectors, rules, and things you can turn on. Do you agree? I would agree. The only thing that you can go with the three is that you might be in that industry and go, you need to have those issues of identity protection. Okay, well, that might cost us a bit more, but the value we get from that will save us a lot more. So you watch another discussion, see which connections go from that, then you're net rules, choose all the net rules, then you'll have the money. But yeah, MVP, you know, get your Azure environment logs in, make sure your devs are actually. Um, you know, using things like just-in-time access, make sure that your RDP ports aren't open to the public. You know, get that view quickly in there to at least then use it to work through like the security recommendations and use it to get your secure score up. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got some security analytics. Uh, the processes that come with the Security Operations Centre. Uh, I'm very aware of the time, so I've actually got to speed this up a bit. Uh, the old way, you know, tiered analyst models, L1s, L2s, I don't believe in that model. Um, I think that sort of breeds, that hierarchical structure breeds a narrow line. Like you should be, as we call it, you, know, you should be a cyber defender. You should just want to threat hunt, want to find, and not just go, my only role is to close false positives and tickets. That leads to burnout that just doesn't, uh, it just doesn't work. Because um, yeah, everyone's like, well that's not my problem, I'm just an L1 analyst. Like, I've closed that ticket, I've hit my quota for the day. That's not good. You want to go, oh, I've spotted this. Right, now I'm going to go dig and run this advanced KQL query in uh, Defender and start pulling the threads and going into it. But if you're locked into that L1, L2 mindset, it might stop sort of that innovation and threat hunting process. Um, so the modern way of doing it is using the sort of framework. So there you have a list of procedures. So like Drew mentioned in the previous slide, you could have L1, L2, we recommend, um, we recommend, but if you're going to have your, what we call cyber defenders, it's like, okay, if this happens, look at this, check this comment, or maybe refer to this other incident. So it's getting a framework where someone could come into the business, know straight away what they need to do. Teams war room, it could be an incident which comes out which is highly critical and you want to get all those people in straight away. Create a war room, which all it does is create a channel up in the teams, go through, work on it, collaborate, archive a ticket, come back to it. Um, it's all mitre aligned, you know, uh, going through the constant 12, 13 steps. And most importantly, it's updated by Microsoft and the community. So if you find that you're getting false positives and you're running this you not going to get up and find that someone's in the community update that case as well. Like that. Yeah, and it looks something like this, thanks to uh, who built this? Rin. Rin. Yeah, he's the man. He spent a lot of time with this. Four, five months. Right? Yeah, five months on building this SOC framework. This is a workbook that you can just deploy. It looks very basic. Here, each one of those is a button. You can sort of customize it to break out. Ah, uh, lost the photos. Uh, the screenshots for that. Uh, so there meant to be another one where uh, yeah, it breaks down into the process where you escalate to an incident response team or a threat hunting team. It's all right there, you know, you can put all your customer information or contact information. Um, you can put all your training materials so you can get new hires into the SOC and make sure that they follow and go through the same path. So you all make similar decisions uh, when incidents actually occur. Yeah, I thoroughly recommend checking out the SOC process framework, uh, framework, work, workbook. Okay, the response side, and we're going to have to very quickly wrap up. So in the pre-SOAR world, so security automate, autom security orchestration, automated response. automated response side of things, um, that pretty much existed in maybe a couple of bash scripts, maybe a PowerShell script. Maybe you would have to call up the IT support desk to reset someone's password as an analyst, and that process is very, very slow and clunky. You know, relying on humans to do tasks like that gives the threat actors the advantage because, well, you're not rapidly responding and isolating and reacting quick enough where you know they could actually move through your network, get 
uh, global admin and ransomware you before you've even reset one user's password through that process. So it just wasn't fast enough. Um, yeah, we don't have any analysts in the room. Has anyone got any experience with any SOAR capability, automated response, anything like that? No? Okay. So um, the cool new way of doing it is... So within the world you've got the automation tabs, so then there you can select custom playbooks. So a custom playbook could be if an I, someone's access someone from outside the UK, which you know unlikely to be them, block, block that um, user account, all be done from a playbook. Um, Unresponsive, so you've got the device which takes your mail on it, automatic runs an air investigation. And within the portal, which is meant to be new in um, the Sentinels, so you can easily go into the playbook template, find something, tell you what that connector is, click, up the clicks, and you've already got a playbook ready to automate your um, task. Yeah, so this is the core thing about deploying a SOC service in seconds. Yeah, this is the real valuable bit. The playbooks, the outcomes, the reaction and response side uh, to all the de good detection stuff that you get deployed there. Uh, so, okay, that kind of wraps it up. Uh, this is the future we want to get to. So our next goal is, yeah, the, our next goal is building a virtual reality sock. Basically, we're always going to live with um, Oculus Rift goggles on, sitting in the corner, threat hunting. Uh, maybe if we come back next year, we'll show you how far we get with that. But that's the objective. Uh, thank you very much. Questions? Anyone? What license does the Sentinel come under? Is it like expired? There's no or? license uh, requirement. So uh, I can have a <coughs> business premium, but then just tack on Sentinel. It all comes with the usual subscription. So it's not like a subscription. P2 or anything? No, 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 that's like Microsoft free. You don't need an actual license. But some of the connectors, you might need a P2. Yeah. So you're using Azure Identity Protection, P2 license, and much different free to buy. Set up a sentinel instance. No, just spin it up and get. No, you can do free with the same connectors. Yeah. Um, we're a bit further behind in our security. So um, we still need to look at uh, investigating the scene for the plant to then use a connector to convert to sentinel, or is there a skip? No, you can skip and straight to sentinel, and then get onto that connectors. There's loads that 119 connectors that have been added, you can just connect before it. Yeah, and you can still deal with all the log sources that you would have fed Splunk, you know, if you exactly. happen to have a syslog server, anything on-prem, it's a common event format, you just get it all in that way. Um, but no, this, this uh, defeats Splunk's relevance. Splunk's dead. Because I'm a converted ArcSight person and I've, I've fallen in love with Sentinel just from the ease of what you can do. Um, we don't have any hardcore guys. Talk to Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. uh, 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 yeah. Especially MSPs who want a SOC capability. So we're an MSSP. Uh, yes, that's definitely a discussion. Yeah. Cool, yes. We don't do consultants, we just do managed services. So get, get, join, join our managed service and uh, yes. <laughs> Talk to this guy. Talk to the sales guy. <laughs> this is not a sales pitch. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>